So the mark of Cain or the mark of the beast is warfare and bloodshed. In the verse 18 it states, And woman, being more helpless than man, cried out with fear, saying, O Lord, how shall I bring forth unto thee and not unto the sons of death? So here the iron woman is asking the Lord how to bring forth children of light rather than children of darkness. And the Lord gave her a sign, as it states in verse 19. And the Lord said, Because thou hast brought forth in pain, and yet called on my name, behold, I will be unto thee as a shield and protector. For I will also put a mark upon the irons, or abelites, my chosen. So thou shalt know them when they come unto thee. So here the Lord states he will be as a shield and protector to the iron woman, or the Abelite women. And he will put a mark upon the irons men to preserve the iron seed. And in verse 20 it states, And the Lord commanded the male irons, or Abelites, old and young, to be circumcised, that woman might not be deceived by the Canaanites. And the irons circumcised one another, old and young. For it was the testimony of the Lord unto woman that seed of their seed was born to everlasting life. So here it states that the mark of the irons or Abel was circumcision. The Lord commanded the iron men, young and old, to be circumcised. And it was a token from the Lord to the woman that she may not be deceived by the Canaanites who did not follow that commandment being uncircumcised. So by this mark of circumcision, the iron woman can identify with the iron men to keep the offspring in the ways of the Lord's commandment. And this was the first circumcision law given to the irons or Abelites, 72,000 years BK, long before Abraham. And in verse 21 it states, and the Canaanites went away into the wilderness and dwelt with the Adamites and with one another. So here it states that the Canaanites went away and dwelt with the Adamites. And in verse 22 through 24 it states, God said, A boundary line will I make between the tribes of Cain and the Ions, or Abelites. And this is the line that I, the Lord God, make between them. Verse 23. The irons shall labor and clothe themselves, and I will abide with them. But the drunks, or Canaanites, shall wander in the wilderness, neither laboring nor clothing themselves. Verse 24, and it was so. So here God states he is placing a boundary line between the two nations, the irons, or the Abelites, and the drunks, or the Canaanites, which is that the irons will be a nation that will clothe themselves and labor while the nations of Cain shall be a wandering nation, wearing neither clothes nor laboring to build themselves up in a condition similar. Now the Canaanites is moving in a condition similar to that of the Adamites. Now I'm going to move into the length of time the Adamites, or Homo erectus, remained on the earth before becoming extinct, leaving the Ions and Canaanites to, um, on the face of the planet. Now, in the first book of the first Lord, chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, it states, The time of the inhabitation of Adam was 8,000 years, and they survived 2,000 years after the time of the birth of the Ains, or Abelites, which is to say, Adam dwelt, or the Adamites, or Homo erectus, dwelt on the earth 6,000 years, and then conceived of the chosen of God, which was the irons, and after that survived 2,000 years. In the verse 2, And Asu, or Adam, disappeared off the face of the earth. So here, it gives the length of time the Adamites lived on the face of the planet before becoming extinct to the more advanced races. It states the Adamites inhabited the earth a total of 8,000 years, from their creation to their extinction. And in the 6,000th year of the Adamites existence is when the new race, the Homo sapiens, or the Ions, came upon the face of the earth, when the earth passed through the Ark of Wayne. 
So from the creation of Adam to the birth of the new race, the Ains, is 6,000 years, which is from 78,000 BK to 72,000 BK. And the Adamites survived 2,000 years after the birth of the new race, the Ains, totaling 8,000 years, which is from 78,000 BK to 70,000 BK. And the Adamites disappeared off the face of the earth. So the Adamites became extinct 70,000 years BK. And all we have is skeleton remains of the Homo erectus or Adamites. And this proves that the Homo erectus race was not millions of years old, as archaeologists say, because bones mold into dust within thousands of years instead of millions of years. And if the Homo erectus lived millions of years ago, there would be absolutely no trace or skeleton remains for that fact. For the fact that bones mold into dust in thousands of years and less. Here it states 70,000 year BK. The Adamites became extinct. So these skeletal remains being found of Homo erectus is of a time period of 70,000 years BK, which is starting from 1848 AD going back 70,000 years ago, is the time of the extinction of the Adamites. And in verse 3, it states, And there remained on the earth the sacred people, the Ions, and the carnivorous people, the drunks, or Canites. And in verse 4 it states, the irons were white and yellow, but the drunks were brown and black. The irons were small and slender, but the drunks, or canites, were tall and stout. So Harris states, after the Adamites became extinct, there remained the irons, or abelites, and the canites. And the canites were carnivores, and the irons were herbivores. And the irons were white and yellow, small and slender. And this is not European white. And the OASP clarifies this. Where it states, Where reference is made as to white people, it does not mean what we in England and America call white people, but white in fact, with white hair also. The same remarks hold in reference to yellow people. So the ions reflected light, which appeared as white and yellow. When seen, by the neighboring tribes, for they had the light of the Father in them. This is where the concept of the halo comes from, when they show the prophets with their head reflecting a white or yellow light, and a more proof of this appearance of reflecting yellow and white light off the surface of the skin is in the King James Bible, in the book of Matthew, verse 17, I mean chapter 17, Verse 1 and 2, where it states, And after six days, Yahshu took Peter, James, John, and his brother, and bring them up into a high mountain, verse 2, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, which is yellow, and his remnant was white as the light. So here it states, Yahshua appeared as yellow and white, or light, when he transfigured. But we know that Yahshua had dark skin, the same with the irons. So these irons in the beginning were in, a, were in appearance as how described the transfiguration of Yahshua in Matthew 17, verse 2. And the Europeans, or Caucasians, have pale skin, which is the result of lack of carbon in the body. To really understand these concepts, you have to understand the science of the body and minerals in the body. But to move along, the Ains were a small race of people and grew no taller than four and a half feet, male and female, or to five feet. And the drunks, or the Canites, were brown and black, tall and stout. And the Canites grew to be five to six feet. In height. So even in the beginning, you had different shades of races in both race groups. 
from brown black to the reflecting of white and yellow or copper 